In this lecture, we're going to learn how we can use that model in an iOS application. You could build it in any kind of Xcode application. And part of that will include testing the model to see can it actually perform a prediction. So we can close create ML, close that project, and we're going to just create a new Xcode project. We'll create an iOS application with Swift UI. So here, choose a template. It's, the platform will be iOS. The application will be a regular app. Then hit next and give your product a name. We'll call this our animal classification product. The interface will be Swift UI and the language Swift. Then we can press next and choose a location where we're going to save our project. Then press create, and that is going to create the new Xcode project called Animal Classification. Now, the first thing we want to do is drag in our ML model file. Remember, we downloaded that from CreateML. This is our trained machine learning model file. We want to drag it right into our application. Okay, make sure that for the destination, you copy the items if needed and you add the actual file to the target of the correct app. Then press finish and now the animal classifier will actually be added to your project. You can click on it and you can see details about the model. So we have the name of the model, we can edit it if we wanted to. If you click edit here, you can then update the model to a package and then edit metadata. So that allows you to edit the model if you want to make changes. We have the availability of the model, size, document type, the model class. This is an automatically generated Swift model class. And here, this is actually created when you add a model to the project because it allows you to use your model just like you would use any Swift class. We have metadata about the model, additional metadata, class labels from one to seven. We have predictions, so this tells us some detail like the inputs. We had 16 different features for input. And for the output, we actually have two outputs. Okay, and these are created by default because we selected the tabular classification template when we created our actual project in create ML. So we have the class type, which is one to seven, mammal, bird, amphibian, etc. Then we also have class type probability, which is a dictionary where you can pass in the class that well, was predicted and you can pass in any class from one to seven and you'll get the probability of the results. So the model will tell you what is the probability for each class that the sample belongs to that class. What is the probability for class one that the sample belongs to that class? What is the probability for class two? So you can get all of the probabilities for each of the classes. And the class with the highest probability is the top predictor. So if you have a sample and the class one gets the highest type probability, that will be the overall class type because that had the highest probability of being the correct class label for that sample. And that is the task of the machine learning model is to assign the correct class label to the sample. We also have utilities, which tells us model encryption and model update, as well as cloud deployment. Okay, so that's how we can drag and drop the file into our project here. We can also change up different properties of the project, like change up the phone type. And if we go into content view, we can resume the preview and we can see currently we just have your standard project, just your basic Swift UI application where you just have a text object that says hello world. Let's go ahead and add in some more content into this app that actually uses our model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our machine learning model to display some kind of prediction. So here, instead of hello world, I'm going to say my animal prediction. Okay, we have that text object. Then I'm going to build a function that's going to return for me a prediction using our model. So let's build a function to store all of the testing. I'll call this test model. And this will return 
our model output. So it returns an animal classification output. So animal classifier output. That is just the name of our machine learning model class, animal classifier, followed by output. Then we may or may not get a result. So we will have a question mark there, meaning that the return value is optional. We may or may not get a result because sometimes, though rarely, the model does fail. OK, so this is the setup for our function. Now, the first step for testing the model is going to be to instantiate a new model object. And we're also getting an error message that we have to return something. So let's just return nil. This just means we'll return nothing for now. But of course, we'll return our prediction shortly. OK, so we're going to use a do catch statement in order to here instantiate our model. This means that we will try to do something, but if there's an error, we will catch the error. OK, so here then we are going to instantiate a model. So we are going to create a new variable and we'll call it model. We're going to try to instantiate the animal classifier model called animal classifier. And to do that, we do have to pass in a configuration. So we're going to pass in a config. This will be another variable config. And we are going to use ML model configuration for this. Now for us to be able to use ML model, we do have to import core ML at the top of the file. So just add that to the top here, import core ML. So what we've done so far is we've imported the core ML model. We built out a function test model, which will return the output of the model. Then we created the configuration for the model and we instantiated the model using the configuration. OK, next up, we can use the model to make a prediction. So here I'm going to make a constant called prediction and I'm going to try to use the model. For that, we can use model.prediction. This is a function that comes from the tabular classification template. It allows you to make a prediction using the convenience interface. And all you have to do is pass in all of the arguments for an animal. So we're going to call model.prediction. If you hit tab, then you'll get all of these different features filled in for you. OK, now what we need here is we need to pass in the values for all of these inputs. OK, so hair. Does the animal have hair? Does the animal have feathers? Does the animal lay eggs? OK, so let's choose a sample animal like a dolphin. And let's put in the attributes for a dolphin. OK, for the hair, and dolphin does not have hair, so I'm going to put 0 for false. Actually, I believe a dolphin does have a bit of hair, so let's put 1 for true. It does have a bit of fur, and I'm going to consider fur to be hair. Then we have feathers. Dolphin does not have feathers, so I'm going to put 0. Dolphin does not lay eggs, so I'm going to put 0. A dolphin does produce milk, so I'm going to pass in a 1. A dolphin is not airborne, so I put in a 0. A dolphin is aquatic, so I put in a 1. It is a predator, so I'll put in a 1. It is toothed, so I'll put in a 1. It does have a backbone, so I'll put a 1 for that attribute. It does breathe, so I'll put a 1 for that attribute. It is not venomous, so I'll put a 0 for that attribute. It does have fins, so I'll put a 1 for that attribute. It does not have legs, so I put a 0 for that attribute. It does have a tail, so I put a 1 for that attribute. It is not domestic, so I put a 0 for that attribute. And it is not cat-sized, so I put a 0 for that attribute. Awesome. OK, so we have here been able to call model.prediction with a sample animal. So this is how you represent an animal. You represent it not by its name, dolphin. You represent it by its features that make up the animal. Then we'll return the prediction if we're able to actually get one. Typically, you will. Sometimes there can be some errors that come up, but that's very rare. Regardless, you do have to use the do catch statement just in case. OK, so we've been able to call model.prediction. Then we can go ahead and use that prediction and display it. So inside of our content view body, let's create a vertical stack. Okay, 
and inside of the vertical stack we'll put in our first text object that says animal prediction. Then I'm going to put in another text object that will contain the predicted class. Okay, this will be a constant that I will create. So just outside of my body, I'm going to create the constant predicted class. How do I get the predicted class? Well, I'm going to call my function test model. I'm going to unwrap it, which means that if it does not have a value, then we'll just throw an error. We will stop the program. And we have to include that because remember, test model returns an optional value. It may or may not return a value. So we have to unwrap it, meaning that if a value is not returned, then we'll just kill the program. Okay, then we're going to get from the test model class type, which will return the class that had the highest type probability. Okay, so then we can show the predicted class in a text object. We do have to convert this to a string though, because if you go into your project and you click on your model, then you go into your utility, your predictions here. You can see that with your output, you have two options, class type and class type probability. One is an int64 and another is a dictionary. So if we want to display class type, we have to convert it from an integer to a string. Otherwise, we can't display it inside of a text object. So it's very easy to convert an integer to a string. You just wrap it in the string object, just like this. And then we get our result, which is one. And you can see that has appeared inside of our application. If you get some other value other than one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, then just change the code or refresh the preview. There might have been some error that shows a different number. You should see a number from one to seven, an integer, meaning a whole number. Okay, so here's our application with the text in there. I can also make the font a little bit bigger so by adding font and then dot size using system size and then we can use 80. So here that will just make the text a little bit easier to see. Okay. So here we have our application and we can see that we have our title, animal prediction, then we have the predicted class, which is one. All right, so that is the prediction for our animal, a one, because we put in a features about a dolphin and one was the class label for a mammal. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.